series of lawsuits filed by former police officers in Chevrolet, Maryland, paint a picture of a department allegedly infected by workplace intimidation, sexual assault, and officer misconduct they say goes right to the top. Some of the allegations go back almost a decade. Coming up in June, there's an important court hearing. So in tonight's special assignment unit report, our Scott Broom takes a deeper dive into both sides of the many allegations. Here in Chevrolet, if the claims in the lawsuits by these ex-police officers are true, it would mean Chevrolet's police department has operated like a rogue's paradise for nearly a decade. Police Chief Buddy Robshaw accused of sexually assaulting an officer's wife, firing anyone who complained about it, looking the other way when his supporters did wrong, and even ordering racist police tactics. But are the claims made by these ex-officers in their lawsuits true? Judges have already ruled that some of the ex-officers were fired for good reason, but that didn't stop them from suing the town anyway. This is something that we've had to deal with for six years. Donna Schmidt is the wife of fired police officer Frank Schmidt. This saga begins with her allegation that Chief Buddy Robshaw sexually assaulted her at a department Christmas party in 2008 and the sworn affidavit of a former police officer backing her up. The chief decided to go behind me take a pull cue, bring it up inside my skirt in between my legs. Um, Wait a minute, this is chief of police. This is chief of police, Chief Robshaw, correct. I knew that it would hurt Frank, um, so it fell on my heart. Yeah, I, just, I didn't say anything. Former police officer James Cathcart wrote in an affidavit, quote, she walked away with a look of disbelief on her face. Cathcart went on to describe a crude remark Robshaw made about Donna. If you speak out against him, He's going to come after you. He told us in staff meetings. Former Chevrolet officers Ed Gazinski and Earl Stone claim in their lawsuit that they heard the same language in staff meetings at the police station and claimed they were threatened if they dared to make an issue of it. He would tell us, him and I, numerous times, multiple times, he wanted to throw her up on a pool table and f the shit out of her, is what he said. He told you guys that? He told both of us numerous times. About her. Your part? My your partner's wife? wife? Yes. Chief Rob Shaw had continued to make remarks throughout the department of his wishes to have sex with me. No one told Frank. Donna kept quiet for a long time because she feared retaliation. About a year and a half later, uh, Frank and I were talking and I decided to tell him. When the news finally breaks for you, what happened? I have not been the same since. I kept it inside too. You know, I don't want to be fired, but I want to do the right thing. What do I do? Do I keep my job and keep my house and keep my kids happy so they can go to college? Or do I do the right thing and protect my wife and, 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 and her honor? And, and that's what I did. And since then, I've lost everything. And he stood up and fought, and look what he got from it. He lost his job. I opened my mouth. I lost my job, he opened his mouth, he lost his job. Him being second in command stood up for another officer, a subordinate, and they abolished his position. Lieutenant Joseph Froelich is the former deputy chief. He was Rob Shaw's right-hand man during much of this, but he ended up out of a job too. He says, you're going to have to pick an allegiance here or what side of the fence you're going to be on where there's going to be serious consequences down the road for you. He's a bully. The Schmitz lawsuit alleges Rob Shaw carried out, quote, a campaign of harassment and humiliation. Frank's lawsuit claims he was targeted with an internal investigation over damage to a police car and eventually fired, reinstated, and then fired again. During the process, a hearing board violated yeah. Officer Schmitz's oh, rights racist. when the chief stacked the panel, according to a Maryland Circuit Court oh, ruling, yeah. overturning I Frank's just, first fire. Schmidt guy. was fired a second time on he allegations did. of overusing he leave and poor job performance. This crack. time, an appeals court upheld the firing, saying, quote, the facts are undisputed. Despite being a seasoned officer having over a decade of experience, Officer Schmidt exhibited significantly inadequate performances after being reinstated. Court of Special Appeals Judge Alexander Wright wrote in the court's opinion. Obviously, that hurts the credibility of Frank Schmidt, and judges have also upheld the firings 
of Stone and Gazinski. They were caught hanging out at convenience stores and up at the Prince George's Hospital Center parking lot instead of being out on patrol. Stone and Gazinski were fired when they made false entries on their logs. According to court records, the town affixed GPS tracking devices on the officers individually assigned police cruisers. Courts upheld those firings because of the officers' failure to exhaust administrative remedies. They were no-shows at their trial board hearings on the advice of their lawyer at the time. But the officers claimed they were set up to fail and targeted for investigations that no other officers with serious allegations raised against them have faced. Stone and Gazinski claim Rob Shaw, quote, imposes discipline in a disparate and arbitrary manner. Other officers who did not oppose Rob Shaw have engaged in more serious misconduct, but were never targeted for investigations. The fired officers claim a rogue colleague was involved in a hit-and-run DUI accident that was intentionally not investigated by the department. Another, they claim, has been padding his time card for years, and his town Easy Pass records showing him going home early will prove it. They accused Chief Robshaw of directing, quote, his white officers that if they saw a black person outside late at night, they were to stop the person and ascertain why they were in the town of Chevrolet, and that officers were ordered, quote, if there's more than one black person in a car, there's marijuana present and they should investigate. This all comes off sounding like a police department here in Chevrolet that might be out of control. No more filming. It's a public meeting. Chevrolet's mayor, Mike Callahan, didn't like it when I asked about the case at a Wintertown council meeting. Council members said they My can't talk is either. That it is, you know, currently being litigated. Town leaders never opened their own independent inquiry of Rob Shaw's alleged behavior and breached their duty to properly investigate, according to Stone and Gazinski's lawsuit. People will come to me, I'm going to go to them. I met Chief Rob Shaw at this community crime watch meeting where he refused an on-camera interview because he said the allegations are personnel matters. But in a sworn deposition, he denies everything and says his accusers are liars. It's your contention they're all lying, Schmidt's attorney asked. Rob Shaw answered, that's correct. What about the people of the town of Chevrolet? They have no idea what is going on. They have no idea. Chevrolet's mayor, Mike Callahan, says Chief Robshaw has been doing a good job cutting crime here in Chevrolet over the years. The chief has the support of the town council. And the mayor says there's no need to investigate this while it's all being litigated in court. If Chief Robshaw or the police department did anything wrong, the mayor says it will be up to a judge to decide. In Chevrolet, Scott Broom, WUSA 9. Attorneys for the town will ask a judge to throw out a lawsuit by Stone, Gazinski, and Froelich at a hearing June 20th. The Schmitz case is scheduled to be tried by a federal jury in October. This is not the first time Chief Robshaw has been accused of wrongdoing. You can learn more about his history by going to our WUSA 9 mobile app or website. Just search Special Assignment Unit. I'm going to verify.